Good evening, good evening everyone. Thank you. Today, the ninth day of November of 2017. This is the Peaceful World Movement show brought to you, of course, by the Peaceful World Movement. It's the Shy Peace show and we want to remind you that we are on 11451 South Michigan Avenue on the south side of Chicago. You can reach us at 716-603. 0992. I'm Dr. Peter K.B. St. Jean, the founder and executive director of the Peaceful World Movement. Today we have an excellent show. I'm glad to introduce my guest, Dean Dr. Gregor Tuswader, who is the Dean of College and Arts and Sciences over at North Park University. Gregor, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. You know, a lot of people hear about Dean, and one way or the other, um, you know, maybe my students think that the Dean is who they pay the money to. Can you, <laughs> can you explain to us what really is a university Dean? You know, that's a good question. Um, sometimes I get this uh, question, what is a Dean, what does a Dean do? Mm -hmm. um, when um, I accepted the offer from North Park University two years ago to come to North Park as a Dean, um, my eight-year-old asked me the same question. <laughs> and was actually very surprised that I would become a dean because you know, mm. we speak German at home and uh, <laughs> dean sounded like Dina, which means servant. Oh. So why would dad <laughs> become a servant now? Yeah, yeah. And then I had to tell him, no, no, it's, it's a little different. Mm. Well, a dean, um, it's an interesting position because a dean, in my case, I'm the dean of arts and sciences at North Park University in Chicago. Um, is uh, more or less in charge of uh, 13 departments in our case. Uh, that is, um, we have uh, 13 departments total in the College of Arts and Sciences. We have uh, departments in the humanities, in the social sciences, but also mm. in the natural sciences. Mm. So that is uh, quite a lot. There's quite a few um, full-time professors that we have, and of course adjunct professors. And the dean um, has to make sure that things are uh, working uh, smoothly, mm -hmm. that the faculty have enough resources, that the students are engaged and happy with their classes. So Dean is um, working behind the scenes mainly, uh, so he's not, he or she's not always visible, mm -hmm. but always working behind the scenes, making sure that things are working out. But it sounds to me like you're a servant. Uh, I guess to a certain extent, <laughs> yes. And you know, there's, um, there's, a, there's a lot of literature on servant leadership. Yes. yes and yes, yes. there's something to that, actually. And yeah, I, I really, you know, when, when my eight year old, then eight year old, told me, uh, asked me if I'm going to be a servant, you know, <laughs> for a moment, um, you know, I was laughing. See, of well, course, being a servant. There's something to that. <laughs> something yes, to servant. Leader, yeah. As you were saying, it sounded to me like you were serving the university through supervision of the faculty, through coordination of act of activities and so on. So right, I guess right. maybe maybe uh, maybe the HL was right. It is a good German translation. Right. Let me re remind you all that this is a live call-in show. You can reach us at three one two seven three eight one zero six zero again. Dr. Peter K.B. St. Jean here with Dean Dr. Gregor Tuswadner from North Park University, the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, and he's also the acting provost. So now tell us, what is a provost? <laughs> now, usually people understand what a dean is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. More so than a provost. What in the world is a provost? Yeah. But the provost is actually the chief academic officer of mm -hmm. a university. Uh -huh. That means uh, that person is in charge of the academic uh, programs at a given university. Mm -hmm. So my boss, so to speak, is the provost. And since our provost is on medical leave at this point, but he will be back very soon, I'm, I was asked to be the acting provost. So who gets the pleasure of firing people, the dean or the provost? <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to answer you the don't question? have to answer okay, that. Good. That I mean, was I a, that was a rhetorical question. <laughs> Nobody gets fired after exactly. all. Nobody does that. But uh, I guess some at some point, whenever you're a supervisor, somebody has to have to lay the axe. So yeah, you don't have to answer that. This was kind of rhetorical. <laughs> Just call me. I'll fire them for you. Okay, if somebody can figure it out. No, <laughs> I won't good. do that. I won't do that. But so now you know you have been at North Park University. This is your second year, right? Uh, you know, you have you have a great academic record. Um, you had to move into Chicago. Mm -hmm. People talk about, oh, this dangerous city. You're probably a superhero to some people because <laughs> they think you've still survived because some people think there's violence all around the corner in Chicago. Sure, sure. What attracted you to North Park mm -hmm. to take this position? Right. Uh, you're absolutely right. There's so many misconceptions about the city of Chicago, which is a fantastic city, of course, as we all know. Um, what attracted me to Chicago was particularly North Park University. 
and the history of North, North Park. Uh, North Park was founded by uh, Swedish immigrants. They were Lutheran pietists. Now, mm -hmm. the word pietist doesn't mean much to many people, but when you look it up and you, you find out more about this uh, strand within Protestantism, that's quite remarkable. Mm. Um, it started in the 17th century in Germany uh, with a theologian named Spener, or Spener and um, his student Franke. And Franke was especially interesting because um, he developed this idea that you know Christians, um, they have to give back. Mm. Um, they have to invest in education and they have to help other people, especially mm. people in need. And, um, and so what, what Franke did in Germany, in the city of Halle, was extremely influential. Um, he founded um, schools for orphans, he made sure that they would have a proper education, mm. um, and he helped people in need. And so there's this phrase that we also sometimes use at North Park University, and that is, uh, for God's glory and neighbor's good. Yeah. Wow. And that really sums up pietism in mm. a way. And then North Park really lives that mm. on a daily basis. And that was and still is very attractive to me. That mm. uh, at North Park University, Christianity means to help other people. Yes, yes. Yes, and on all of us at North Park University, all the faculty members, and I guess a full time staff as well, all Christians, that correct? Right, full time that's staff, but certainly all faculty members. And it's, it's so, such a great thing for me that I can begin on the first day of class and say a prayer, and I can say a prayer anytime and not have to worry about, about issues of separation of church and state because we have the ability to do that as a, as a, as a private uh, Christian university. I also want to show our viewers uh, a little bit about the, the website. Of course, North, North Park University is a nonprofit organization um, at, at, located at 3225 uh, uh, West Foster Avenue in, in Chicago, uh, rooted in Christian faith, uh, education, we had uh, equipped uh, for the sciences. Uh, we have different aspects. Uh, we have nursing programs and different programs that people can visit the website. If I keep going down the website, I'll see our superstar student, Molly, in the back that's answering the phones. So when you guys call in, you guys will be seeing Molly. But um, one of the things, when I get back here, I want to I want to do a little bit of show and tell because Molly um, um, is uh, one of the students in my research methods class. And at North Park, we are, we are setting up peaceology. You know, mm -hmm. so peaceology, the scientific study of peace and peacefulness in multiple contexts, with the belief that a major solution to violence is to make peace profitable, is being born there at North Park University. And on the 17th, next Friday, we are going down to Mullican University, and we have had 11 abstracts approved uh, for presentation, and uh, Mali's class is uh, the, we are going out there and she's one of those um, who will be presenting. In fact, let me just give you guys a little bit of a preview uh, about, about this. And if you went to the website of, of North Park University uh, on the news of today, you will see uh, the news about the students presenting at the university, at, the, at, at Milken University. And listen to some of the, listen to some of the subjects. Uh, one here is not, I, I, I'm not going back, recidivism, well, this actually should be dissidivism and, and social environment in Chicago. We coined the word dissidivism. I have to ask them to fix that. Rage, uh, uh, revenge without violence. People talk about gun violence and revenge without violence. Mm -hmm. Peace without guns, right? The uprise, uh, youth and gang avoidance in Chicago, usually, but gang involvement. Mm -hmm. The idea of poverty and peace in Chicago, voices from the ground. And in spite of it all, uh, triumph after human trafficking because we often hear a lot about human trafficking mm -hmm. and how bad happens but we are trying to understand how even good things can happen how people can build their lives after experiences with with domestic uh, with, with um, human trafficking and I am um, Javan Berger from Norway who is now a, a student at North Park University and Shana Wang who is now at Commun Communication and, and Theater they are joining me on another panel where we introduce the idea of peaceology and urban peaceology and they'll be doing a, a, a presentation on visual urban peaceology. Uh, Eric will be leading this one, and Shana Wong will be doing one on the role of theater um, in, in urban life. And um, Molly in the back is one of those um, on dissidivism, the issue of dissidivism. You heard it here for the first time, perhaps. Dissidivism, not recidivism. In fact, Greg, imagine that. We were doing the research. 
and we are doing better news research, mm -hmm. which is that we have so much bad news in the world. Right. How do we think about problems and find, instead of studying the problem, study the solution? So we wanted to understand, you know, you know, what happens, how do we understand people who were in once in prison and who are staying out and mm -hmm. no longer going in? Mm -hmm. And we realized that there is no, there's a word for recidivism for those who go in, hmm. but there, this is so understudied that, there, you know, sociologists like to coin words. Sure. There's not even a word, really, because you can say desistance, but desistance is actually a process. Right. You know, right. and um, there's a, um, we talk about reentry, re or they talk about a lower reentry, but actually something like decidivism, a concept mm -hmm. of that sort. Mm -hmm. So I decided we will coin that word and put it in. Man. So if you guys are trying to uh, take this, don't worry about this. Um, Susan Meyer, intellectual property attorney, is already on it right so don't even bother right i'm just gonna call suzanne this word doesn't belong to you right it belongs to the urban peace lab yeah at North park university but in all seriousness you know um the students we are looking forward and soon i'll be sending you a bill to sign off to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey. uh, everyone let me remind you this is the, <laughs> the peaceful world movement show three one two seven three eight one zero six zero and just to give you a little heads up we'll be riding a comfortable bus to the to, because they're riding for three hours in you know, a molly and the students deserve a nice ride i want to take the pictures and the show the excellence that they do. We want to show off North Park in a very nice way. So that'd be a nice, comfortable bus that'd be riding. But how does it feel uh, to you? What does it mean to you to have something like Peaceology being developed at North Park University, especially considering the, the mission and the vision mm -hmm. of the university? I think it's fantastic. I think there's so much potential with this vision of Peaceology because it's so unique. It's not, quote unquote, just peace studies. But um, and the, um, the phrase that you coined to me is to make peace profitable, I don't think it's just a phrase. I think mm -hmm. the, the concept really makes sense when, when you think about it. Uh, because profitable, the way you understand it, doesn't have only something to do with capitalism per se, but mm -hmm. uh, the word profit is related to benefit, so it's really about the, the value of peace. Yes. Um, and I think that is something that um, North Park University is, is very interested in. Because, uh, you know, let's face it, the, we're in the business of education, mm -hmm. and education should lead to more peaceful life. We teach uh, classes that help students uh, become better citizens, right? This mm -hmm. is a major goal of ours, mm -hmm. and to become peaceful. And I think when you, when you look at the, the very interesting programming we have at North Park University, the new Catalyst program, mm -hmm. I think that's exactly what we're trying to do, and I think we're actually accomplishing it. Um, yeah. Yes, well, it, it, it's amazing because when I talk to my other colleagues and we talk about how do we create a more peaceful Chicago, it's amazing how people, sometimes before you talk about something, like, you know, if you have you know, purple Range Rover, you probably never saw another purple Range Rover. Right. But then once you bring it home and you thought you were in it, all of a sudden you start seeing purple Range Rovers, right? right. So um, in, in one of the documentaries we did Shy Peace, you know, in the, in the promo, we asked people, why isn't there more violence in Chicago? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people get stunned. Right. Because they're thinking, what, are you crazy? There, can, can there be more violence in Chicago? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, there could be more. And I think if we understand why there isn't even more, we'll better understand some of the things that are in work and, in working. Because you know, we have spent so much time studying failures. It's mm -hmm. the 125th year after the establishment of the Department of Sociology at the University of Chicago, the very first mm -hmm. in the United States. And 125 years later, last year, we had 124 years later, homicide went up by 70% compared to 10 years before. Mm -hmm. I'm not blaming all the, the dissertations and the books and so on, right. but something is not right. We have our first caller. Caller, thank you so much for calling. Do you have a question or a comment? Yes, I have a question for the dean. Sure. Go right ahead. Yes, thank you for calling. Yes, yes, thank you. So the, uh, the dean just mentioned um, discussion on the value of peace. And so my question is, how do you see training students for both stewardship and citizenship can help to lead them to really discover the value of peace, but also to make it a part of whatever career that they're going into as they are also becoming stewards and good citizens of the world? 
Well, thank you for this question. That's a very, very good question because that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to educate students at Northbrook University in, in a different way, I would say, than many, probably most universities here in Chicago. How, how so? Well, um, we just introduced a new program called the Catalyst 606 underscore underscore program. And what that means is we, um, we integrate uh, real life experiences, uh, experiential learning, so to speak, uh, into the curriculum. And so what we do is um, on Wednesday afternoons, students are out and about um, in the city of Chicago. They're doing certain projects. They're meeting with community leaders. They're finding out more about the city of Chicago. And I'm not just talking about you know, the wonderful cultural institutions that we have, uh, the Art Institute, for example, or the Museum of Science and Industry. No, I'm also talking about meeting with recent immigrants and finding out more about where they're from, uh, talking to different types of people uh, that they wouldn't probably encounter, especially not if they only studied on campus. And so I think that is so important for students to get out to really engage with the city of Chicago. And what we're trying to do is um, we're trying to teach our students that the city of Chicago is our classroom, part of our classroom, and the uh, Chicagoans are teachers. And so there's so much we can learn from each other. And I think that um, is one way how we can bring peace, because that's what it needs. It needs communication. It needs students to listen you know, um, and attentively and to learn from other people, learn from different perspectives. And I think that uh, is huge when it comes to trying to live a peaceful life. Yeah. Caller, are you still there? Caller, are you still there, Caller? I guess the caller may have just asked the question. And, well, caller, thank you for the question. Gregor, thank you for yeah, responding. Thank you. Uh, Gregor, I want to play your clip from uh, Provost uh, Emerson that you are now sitting in for um, about uh, the idea of making peace profitable. I want to get your reaction and uh, maybe the reaction of viewers uh, uh, to this clip. Uh, listen to Provost Emerson here in this clip. And as you think about the, uh, the, the idea, uh, at least something that we consider to be very excited and very new, uh, of let's build an industry of peace. How does that resonate with you as a provost of this university? So let me answer it this way. I've actually been studying the city of Copenhagen over in Denmark and Scandinavia. And they were broke. They were bankrupt city in the early 90s. And they made a decision that, you know what, we're going to focus on being a green city and more than that, we're going to be the incubator for green technologies, that people are going to come here that want to invent new ways to make a healthy world. And so they, they took the gamble, and now they grow so fast they don't even know how to uh, make enough housing because people are pouring in for exactly that reason. They're coming there to invent new ways to make a healthy world. Mm -hmm. That's the promise of Shy Peace, that vision that you can actually make it an industry, peace. We don't think about that. Just like we used to think green was something you did on the side. It wasn't an industry that you could do. So I see huge potential. And coming out of the idea of a professor at North Park University, that's what I mean by the next great American university. We are changing the way we do the real world. We are changing the way we do the real world. What are your thoughts about that? Well, that's why I'm so excited to be at North Park University because um, we really want to change things. And that's why we're so happy to have you as uh, our chair of the sociology department and criminal justice program at North Park University because North Park University will make a difference in the world. Um, we aspire to be the leading Christian city-centered university in the nation and we are in the right path because of uh, this particular project, for example. Yes. Um, and um, that's exactly what it takes. It, ta it takes creative people like yourself to come up with an idea um, that is revolutionary, that can really change the way we think. And it's really about reframing. It's really changing the way we think about problems, reframing that. And all of a sudden, it becomes clear. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to explain what you mean it's it's natural right it comes natural to you of course i mean and then you say well, 
you know, how come we haven't thought along those lines yes. for the last 200, 300 years? Yes, yeah. yes. Well, thank you for the comment. Viewers, let me remind you, we just have about four more minutes to go, so get the words in there. Um, so call in at 312-738-1060. This is the Peaceful World Movement Show. I'm Dr. Peter K.B. St. Jean, the Chair of the Sociology Department at North Park University, criminologist, sociologist. I also direct criminal justice both in the Department of Sociology and in the School of Professional Studies. At 312-738-1060, you can call in and uh, you can reach us. You can reach us at www.shypeace.net or you can send me an email at peter at peacefulworldmovement.org. O R G, Gregor. I know you know a lot about history. You are a linguist. Is that what is your is that a linguist? What is your prof, your academic background? Uh, yeah, specialization. German. Well, it is uh, German literature, but mm. also linguistics. Yes. Linguistic. Ling yeah. What is linguistics and a linguist? Is that the same thing or something different? Well, a linguist studies linguistics. Oh. Which is the study or the science of language. Yeah, just like my students, including Marley over there, I say, do not write methodology when you write about methods, because methodology <laughs> is the study of methods. That's exactly so if right. you just want to talk about how you do the research, I know methodology, Marley, is a nice, big, fancy word, but just simply call it methods. Right? <laughs> so linguistics, and ling yes. Right. So I know, but I know that you are a, a student of history. So I'm going, to, I'm going to try to put you on the spot here. I get to try to put my dean on the spot. We're talking about the Shy Peace Show, making peace profitable. Is there any event on this day in history that has relevance to a more peaceful world? I think so. Um, you know, November 9th, um, 1989 mm -hmm. was a very important date, uh, not just in German history, but uh, in world history, because that was uh, the opening of the Berlin Wall. I thought I, could, I thought I could stump the guy. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Molly, help me out. Give me a question. So it was the fall of the Berlin Wall. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do you think is the significance? I mean, what do you think came out of that? You know, uh, that, uh, let me backtrack a little bit. I, I was um, 16 years old at that time, and so I was uh, watching TV, right? And we couldn't believe our eyes. Mm. We thought this would never, we would never see this in our life mm -hmm. lifetimes, right? So that um, has something to do with a sort of limited imagination. And that ties into what you said before about making peace profitable. Mm -hmm. I think it's because of our limited imagination that we haven't really done this for the last 200 years or so. But I think when it comes to the fall of communism, I think we have seen, at least um, in, in the aftermath, that um, the world can be a peaceful place or more peaceful. Um, of course, we've had major problems since the fall of the Berlin Wall. Mm -hmm. um, but we've also seen you know, peace in those regions in Europe and Eastern Europe um, that have seen more democracy and, uh, and more peace. Yes. Tear down that wall, Mr. President. I remember a certain president said that to another certain president, but I'm not necessarily going to mention their names. Again, you have a minute. You have a minute to really call in if you, have a, if you want to put, a, to put in a word here seven, at 312-738-1060. One zero six zero. So, as we wind down, what do you hope for uh, uh, in to, in, as part of the future of North Park? Well, I'm hoping that uh, we will continue on that path and uh, we will continue to really change the imagination of people of what is possible, um, how to make uh, a peaceful world. What does it mean to be a peaceful citizen? And to contribute to peace. What are the actions that, that the actions that we take, the things that we buy in supermarkets and what have you, uh, that can contribute to peace? Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that um, uh, you know um, we will be able to teach those kinds of things to our students. Yes, thank you so much. Time flies when you're having fun, and I can <laughs> sing. <laughs> I know that. Thank you so much for watching the Shy Peace Show. This is a wind up. We had our guest. Dean Dr. Gregor Tuswaldner, uh, the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences and Acting Provost at North Park University. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for asking questions. Next week, we'll have a dynamic show. Our guests will be from the South Side of Chicago, working with returning citizens, ex-offenders, uh, veterans, and the like. And we ask you to watch our show. I'm Dr. Peter K.B. St. Jean. I want to thank you for watching.
have a pleasant weekend.